In this video for positive box, we're going to learn more about proportion. So we previously learned a little bit about something being directly proportional. So let's look at an example. The ratio of miles to kilometers is approximately 1 is to 1.6. So miles to kilometers, 1 is to 1.6. So what this is telling us then is 1 mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. Okay, you need to calculate the following miles in kilometers and use the graph to check your answers. All right, so the first part. From the ratio, we know that one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. So therefore, two miles is going to be 1.6 multiplied by two which is going to give us 3.2 kilometers. The next one then, we're looking for 3 miles. So 3 miles is going to be equal to 1.6, this time multiplied by 3 kilometers. So we'll get 4.8. And our last one, 4 miles. So 4 miles is going to be 1.6 multiplied by 4. And we get 6.4 kilometers. So now let's check all of those on our graph. So our first one we have is 2 miles. So we go to the x-axis. We go up along the dotted line. And we see that, yes, it is about 3.2 kilometers. Our next one, 3 miles, again, we go up along the dotted line until we meet the line. We go across and we see that, yes, it is approximately 4.8 kilometers on our graph and 4 miles. Again, we do the same. We go up, we go across, and we see that, yes, it is 6.4 kilometers. So we have converted miles to kilometers, and we see from the graph that we're given that our answers are correct. Okay, the next part. We need to convert the following speeds to kilometers per hour. Okay, so we'll take our ratio again. So 1 is to 1.6. So again, we know 1 mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. So now we want to find 20 miles, 60 miles, and 90 miles. Okay, so again, we need to multiply 1.6 by 20, and we will find 32. 1.6 by 60, and we'll find 96. And 1.6 by 90, and we find 144. So now our speeds are going to be 32 kilometers per hour. We're going to have 96 kilometers per hour and 144. Okay, now we're going to talk about inverse proportion. If a car travels at a speed of 25 kilometers per hour, it will take four hours to travel 100 kilometers. If it travels 50 kilometers per hour, it will take two hours to travel the same distance. Okay, so 25 kilometers per hour is four hours, and 50 kilometers per hour is two hours. So this is when we're traveling the same distance. So we see that the time taken to travel will decrease if the speed increases. Okay, so the time will decrease when the speed increases. Another example is the time taken to cook food will decrease if the temperature increases. So these are both examples of inverse proportion. 
So before we saw direct proportion. This was when one thing increased, so did the other. Now we're talking about inverse proportion, when one thing increases, another thing decreases. Okay, let's take an example. If it takes five builders 80 hours to build a garage, how long will it take eight builders to do the same job? So, we're going to take this problem in steps. The first thing we need to do here is find the total number of hours. It takes to build the garage. Okay, so the total number of hours that the job takes. Okay, so how we do this is we multiply. It took five builders, 80 hours. So that means all together, it was 400 hours of work. Now we need to figure out how long it will take eight builders. So the time it takes eight builders. Okay, so the total time then, 400, divided by eight, so it will take them 50 hours. So this is a simple example of indirect proportion. When we increased the number of builders, then the hours that it took to do the job decreased. If you want to find more out about positive maths, you can go to www.positivemaths.ie. You can email us at info.positivemaths.ie and find us on Facebook and Twitter.